Hi everyone. Welcome to Frappe School. This is the first chapter in our inventory management course and today we will be discussing master data management. By the end of this chapter, you will know what is an item and how to create it, what are warehouses and how to create them, what are the various stock settings available in ERP Next. First, let's understand what master data is. Master data is the central database used to define entities so that there is a standardization and uniformity across the organization. Let's look into the two main masters required for inventory management, that is items and warehouses and their importance. The item master is the most basic master data required to record transactions in an ERP system. It defines the item being transacted, that is, being bought, sold or transferred. Therefore, creating the item master correctly is critical to any successful implementation. Any mistake in item master will lead to mistaken entries in transactions. Next, let's talk about warehouses. Practically, a warehouse is a storage location where item is stored. In ERP Next, warehouse is a broader concept and is not just limited to warehouse buildings where inventory is stored, but can also include sub-locations like shelves within the warehouse building. Defining the correct warehouse type will also lead to more detailed reports. Lastly, we will also have a look at the stock settings to explain how the various settings work. Let's see how we can create the various stock masters in ERP Next. Let's first explore and configure some stock settings. We can navigate to stock settings using the awesome bar. First is the items default section. Here we can select how we want any item to be named. For example, if we want the item to be named same as the item code, then we can select item code here. Or if we want the items to be named using a naming series, then we can select naming series. For example, let's select item code. Next, if we want to set a default item group, we can set it in the default item group field. Along with that, we can also set a default unit of measure, default warehouse and a default valuation method. There are some values that are automatically added and can be changed as per our needs. These values will be fetched when any new item is created in the system. We can even set an example retention warehouse here and add a default naming series for batch IDs. If we select the checkbox, a field appears where we can add a naming series. Next, we have the stock transaction settings. Here, we can add the tolerance percentage to receive or deliver extra against the item quantity ordered. We can set an over delivery or receipt allowance percentage here. Let's say 10% and then add the user roles who can do this. We can even add a over transfer allowance here. There are also a few checkboxes that we can configure. The auto insert item price if missing checkbox. Enabling this will insert an item price to the price list of an item automatically when using that item in a transaction. The update existing price list rate checkbox allows us to update the price list rate from transactions for each item. Allow negative stock allows stock to be displayed in negative values. We can also choose to show barcode fields in stock transactions and convert item descriptions into HTML when needed. Next, we have the quality inspection settings section. Here, we can choose what action is to be taken if quality inspections are not done or standards are not met. We can choose between stop and warn. 
Next, we can enable automatic reordering for stock when it reaches the appropriate reorder level and choose to be notified by email when an automatic material request is created. In the Inter Warehouse Transfer Settings section, the first checkbox is useful when a material transfer needs to be presented as a delivery note. The second checkbox is used when a material transfer needs to be presented as a purchase receipt. The last section is the control historical stocks. The last section is the control historical stock transaction section. Here, we can freeze stock entries until a certain threshold date or if the stock is older than a certain amount of time. We can define the values in the field given here. We can also give permissions to allow certain users to create or edit backdated transactions and add their user roles here. Moving on, let's see how we can set up warehouses. In ERP Next, the term warehouse is used in a broader sense to depict any kind of storage location, internal shelves, rooms, etc. Warehouses are shown in a tree format in ERP Next. We can access the warehouse tree by searching for it in the awesome bar. Here, we can see all the warehouses previously created in the system. To try a new warehouse, we can select a group and click on the new button. We can name the warehouse, let's name it Eastern Raw Materials. If this warehouse has any other warehouses under it, then we can select the Is Group checkbox. Then we can click on Create New. Once saved, we can click on Edit to add additional details. Here. We can define a warehouse type. Let's select transit. We can define a default account for all transactions with this warehouse here. If we leave it blank, the company default account may be used. Next, in the addresses and contacts section, we can add various addresses and contacts for the warehouse. This will make information access easier. For example, we can add billing or shipping addresses and add the warehouse manager's contact as well. Now we can save these changes. From the warehouse master, we can check the stock balance for this warehouse. We can even open the general ledger to see accounting transactions. And the third non-group to group button can be used to make this warehouse a parent warehouse. Before we configure our item master, let's set up our item groups. In ERP Next, item groups are represented in a tree format. An item group is used to classify items based on their types. Suppose we are a manufacturing organization and we make different kinds of products. We can use item groups in ERP Next to classify them as per their type or use. For example, if we have five raw material items, then we can create a parent group named raw material. Let's try it out. We can navigate to the item group tree by searching for it in the awesome bar. Here, we can see various pre-created parent groups and child groups listed. We can add a new parent item group by clicking on the new button. Here, we can name our item group. Let's name it raw materials. And then select the group node checkbox. This will enable us to create more nodes under this item group. Once done, we can click on Create New. Now, if we want to add another one under the parent group we just created, we need to click on the group 
and click on add child here we will be able to add this new group and save it now let's set up our item master we can navigate to the item list using the awesome bar here we can see a list of all the items registered in the system for our organization with their status that is if they are enabled or not to create a new item we can click on add item we will first need to fill in the item code let's say polyester sheet the item name field will be auto filled with the same as the item code next we will need to select an item group let's select raw materials the item group we just created next we can set a default unit of measure this will help define how your item is measured for example by quantity or by weight the default is set to numbers we can set up more units of measure in the master data settings moving on we have a few check boxes on the right side the disable check box helps us define whether this item is currently enabled in the system or not if we select it the item is disabled if we select the allow alternative item check box this will enable us to choose an alternative item if this particular one is out of stock or not available alternative items have to be set up separately next selecting the maintain stock check box will help us if we are maintaining stock for this item and the system will create stock ledger entry for every transaction for this item the include item in manufacturing check box is used for items such as raw materials if this item is an additional service then we have to unselect this check box next we have the opening stock field where we can add the opening amount of stock for this item the valuation rate and standard selling rate for this item can be added as well if this item is a fixed asset then we can select the is fixed asset check box once we do then we can define an asset category and add a selling rate stock details don't apply here in the description section we can add a brand name and a description for this item if we wish in the inventory section we can define various details such as shelf life warranty period end of life weight per unit and weight uom let's add all of these in the default material request type field we can set the default material request type as either purchase material transfer material issue manufacturer or customer provided this will set a default value in the type field in material requests we can even select a valuation method between fifo and moving average the next section here is automatic reordering when the stock of a certain item dips under a certain amount we can set up automatic reordering per item we need to enable this in stock settings like we saw before automatic reordering will create material requests for this item when we add a row to the reorder table we will first need to define the warehouse where this item quantity needs to be checked and then define which warehouse this item needs to be ordered for in the request for field we will learn more about this in the upcoming chapters once done we can save this row in the units of measure table we can add multiple and alternative units of measure along with their conversion factors for example if we add weight then 
we can add the corresponding conversion factor here. If our item has a batch or serial number, then we can use the serial numbers and batches section and select the checkboxes respectively and add their details as well. An item variant is a different version of that item. We can manage item variants for this item using the variant section. Here, we can define the variants based on the attributes of the item or based on the manufacturer. Next, we have the sales, purchase, accounting default section. Here, we can add a row in the item defaults table and add a default warehouse and a default price list for this item. These values will now automatically show up in transactions whenever applicable. In the next section, we can define supplier details. We can use the delivered by supplier checkbox to show if this item is delivered by a supplier or not. Next, we can add supplier items and part numbers in the table if applicable. Let's move on to sales details. Here, we can add a default units of measure and cap a maximum discount. We can select the Is Sales Item checkbox to use this item in sales transactions and the Grant Commission checkbox to issue a commission to salespersons, etc. Up next, we have Deferred Revenue and Deferred Expenses. We can use this section if this item is subscription-based whose terms have to be fulfilled over various months. Next, we have Customer Details. A customer may identify an item with a different item code. Here, we can add the customer's name, group and the reference code for this item. If this item has a different tax rate than the rate in the standard tax account, then we can define it here in the item tax section. In the inspection criteria section, we can define when quality checks need to be done for this item and use the check boxes to configure whether checks need to be done before purchases or deliveries. This brings us to the end of the first chapter in our inventory management course. I hope this helped you understand how to create master data and configure settings for stock in your system. You can read more about ERPNext on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will discuss the basics of inventory accounting. Thank you.